part of the reason that I found this uh, Nazi space plane so interesting, I wanted to research it, and it took me a while, like I said, this is one of these episodes I researched for a while, is because it made me rethink a little bit of my thoughts on uh, UFOs. And I want to I want to be clear. I am 100% a believer in aliens, both interdimensional and uh, interplanetary. I believe in both of those forms of aliens 100%. I believe UFOs, very possibly alien craft, um, at least uh, some of the UFOs that we see. However, I want to take you back and think about uh, a brief history of flight and aircraft. It's the very early 1900s when the Wright brothers invent the airplane, right? It's like 19, oh, I wish I had wrote it down. I made a note to write it down. Hold on. Let's look it up real quick. I got my laptop right here. Let's go ahead and look it up. Um, I want to say 1903 at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, the Wright Flyer became the first Powered heavier than air machine to achieve controlled sustained flight with a pilot aboard. So, 1903, we have a plane, right? Now, what's fascinating about that is we had no planes before 1903. Then, we use aircraft in war for the first time in, I believe it's 1911. Yep, 1911. We used Aircraft for the first time in war in 1911. I believe that what happened was um, they used that for like reconnaissance. And then I think shortly thereafter that they would fly over enemy targets and just throw grenades out of the planes. So within eight years of inventing planes, we were already using them for war. But what's fascinating to me is now if you fast forward like 25 years, Eugen Sanger is already starting to consider the space plane idea and bombing the Americans 25 years after we started using them in war and like 35 years after planes were invented. So planes didn't exist. And less than 40 years later, we were already thinking about a, or we, I'm sure we were too, but uh, the Nazis were already thinking about using a space plane. And so I, what fascinates me is the fact that they were close. They weren't incredibly close, but they were close before those projects got scrapped. I was looking into it. I mean, if you had given them a little bit more resources and another like five years, it's before 1950 and they would have had the space bomber for sure. And so what makes me rethink some of these current UFO sightings is simply the fact that you then have to think about how exponentially quickly um, technology advanced after World War II, just in general, just across the board. Think about how much more technology we have got over the last 80 years. And keep in mind, next year will be, uh, let's see, 80 years since 1942. So think about that. World War II wasn't that long ago. But anyway, we have had 80 years since World War II. And look how quickly they moved to start militarizing these things. Look how quickly they were thinking about space from the point that we just got flight. So now, if we invented planes and less than 40 years later, they were thinking about, hey, we can make a space plane that can bomb things. What do you think happened for the next 80 years after that? I cannot imagine what they kept working on and what, uh, what the military already has, especially in this country, because as we covered, a lot of the people that were able to make that shit when no one thought it was possible or started working on it came to work for us. So the United States military could very well have technology that we are uh, completely unaware of. And I do think it's an interesting flex, uh, considering that we seem to be in a cold war with China right now. There seem to be a lot of tensions with a country like Iran. And I find it interesting that a lot of our UFO sightings do happen right above our own military. Because if we did have a secret military technology, the argument would be, we fly it above our own shit, which is the best shit that anyone has. We block their radar. We zoom off. No one can explain it from that ship. They've seen it all. Worse, that's supposed to be the cutting edge technology. And the people that are behind that are terrified of whatever these UFOs are because they're like, we couldn't stop this if we had to. I think uh, that's a bit of a flex if that's actually us. And we're trying to kind of let everybody else know like, hey, we didn't stop working on this stuff. And I think the fact that you see that exponential growth in technology since World War II, and then when you consider how much we seemed to be focused on air superiority from the moment planes were invented, 
I do think it's an interesting argument. I don't think it's all of those UFOs, but I do think you have to consider that we are talking about a fucking space plane in 1940. They were trying to build a space plane. They had had planes for like 40 years, and they were trying to build a one that could go in space and bomb stuff. So I, I think that when you look at some of these UFOs as potentially some sort of military technology, and this is some sort of flex that we're doing right now, I think that's very alarming, but it could explain some of it. I'm not fully convinced. I'm just saying the show is called Nick Learns Everything. I learned about this. It's pretty fucking crazy. I mean, this uh, is really kind of wild to consider that they uh, were going this route in the 1940s. And so I don't know. I don't know. I think that's okay. At the end of the day, that's a little bit what this show is about, right? You got to learn about stuff. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what those UFOs are. That's okay. It doesn't have to be one thing or the other. It can be both. I always say this. It can be both. Some of them can be us with some secret military stuff. Some of them are interplanetary aliens. Some of them might be interdimensional aliens. I believe in all that shit. So at the end of the day, that's what it is. I think, uh, I think uh, you know, it's just fun to learn about this stuff. I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's one of those things. I think the more that you learn, the more that you can reform your thinking in certain areas. I think the more you get closer to the truth. And this is not something that's going to relate to my daily life at all, but it is fun. I do enjoy it. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you learn stuff. Uh, you learn things. I learned a lot of stuff here that uh, I didn't even cover. And so, I don't know. I just... Uh, I really enjoyed researching this episode and I hope you guys enjoyed it.